<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, hello. I'm on here. There we go. Watch a blessed band, would you? Thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I, I just felt like singing that song for a while. So I was sad you ended it. It was, it was just feeling good, wasn't it? Yeah, I could, but it'd be <laughs> punishment or something, no. Ah. Mm. Jesus made a statement to the disciples in the Gospel of John. He said, the Holy Spirit who is with you will be in you. There was about to take place the most dramatic change to ever happen in human history, where God would not just visit with people, not just touch them powerfully, but he would actually come to make the human body a temple. And not only to make it a temple, but make them a resource center of heaven's power, unlimited, incomprehensible, uncontrollable power. And Jesus declared it to a group of 12 men, 11 of which made it through that next season. It was a season filled with all kinds of learning, all kinds of experiences. They encountered the presence of God, it's not true that he wasn't with them because Jesus actually declared that the Spirit of God had come, been with them. I imagine that perhaps when Jesus announced to them that they had his power and his authority, that there was a transference, there was a sense of presence that came about them. Certainly, as they learned to minister with him, they became acquainted with the presence of God that was in the atmosphere. And in that presence and in that atmosphere, where they heard what Jesus would teach, they saw his example, they were inspired by his words. They, with the rest of the crowd, stood there and would admit they had never heard anyone like this before. And even when Jesus preached a message that offended everybody in John 6, when he talked about eating his own body, even when he brought a message that caused a crowd of thousands to leave, mumbling, complaining, arguing with each other. Even in the midst of that environment, the disciples who didn't understand any more than the crowd said, with you are words of life. And whenever you talk, we come alive inside. And so in this journey that they had with Jesus over these years, They learned, in a sense, the secret of Jesus' life and ministry, that he was a man of the Spirit, a man of the Spirit of God. I sometimes emphasize the humanity of Jesus only because I want to make sure that we understand that Jesus gave us an example that's followable. But I don't want anyone to ever misunderstand my emphasis. Jesus is eternally God. He never stopped being God. He didn't attain to the position. He didn't earn it. He's God. And he took on flesh. And we sang it this morning. And we were talking earlier. I think some of the Christmas songs are some of the strongest prophetic decrees that we've got to sing year-round. Let earth receive her king. That's, that's a tough one to beat. That's an intercessory prayer right there as we prophesy and declare what the Scripture has already said, that the earth will receive her king. And so these disciples who tried their best to please this one. In fact, when Jesus announced to Peter that he wasn't strong enough to make the next season, and he announced to him that he would actually deny him three times, Jesus, or Peter said, I'm willing to die for you. It wasn't a careless statement that Peter made. He had seen the threats. He had seen Jesus or heard of him sneaking through the crowd with a group of people that wanted to throw him over the hill or whatever it was. They wanted to 
crucify or kill him or destroy him or beat him or whatever it was. They watched and they knew that it was both high and low following this Jesus. It was not a careless statement. But Jesus looked into Peter and realized that he did not have the depth, the substance of encounter to enable him to go through that next season. And all that you see, the flakiness and yet the profound decrees that these disciples made. Profound decrees. Because out of nowhere, Peter announces, you're the Christ. He gets it. He gets it. He understands that he's the Messiah. Profound decrees in the sense that he says, your words actually impart life. Your words become spirit that impart life. And they would pick up these things from God and they would nail it. And you know at other times, they would do the dumbest things. And Jesus announced to them that there was a moment coming. John the Baptist had actually prophesied it before Jesus' ministry began. He said, there's one coming after me. I'm not worthy to untie his shoes, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. And he made this announcement. Many have thought that conversion, being born again, is the goal of God for humanity. I would never want to discount that because you don't get anywhere without being born again. But I'd like to suggest to you that being born again is what qualifies you for what God intended in the first place. And that is for a person, a human being, one made in his image, to absolutely be filled, saturated, overflowing with this permanent river, this ongoing spring of life called the Holy Spirit of God to be possessed and filled with God himself. That was the ambition that God had for every human being. But for that to happen, sin had to be destroyed first. Jesus came to these disciples, and he was about to die. And he announced to them <clears throat> that he was going. And it was better that he went, because in his ascending to the Father, he would leave the Holy Spirit. It's really good from this end because we read the story. We know how it turned out. But in that moment, that looked like a risky proposition to turn all of his work over to the 11 remaining, all who had died, excuse me, all who had denied him within days of his departure. So you're about to turn the whole thing over to guys who said, I don't know him. And you're about to leave them in charge. That's faith. It was not faith in them. It was faith in the encounter they were about to have. We see that Peter denied Christ. But read the scripture. It says that all the disciples denied him. Judas went and hung himself. The remaining 11 denied him, wanted nothing to do with him, and yet felt the guilt and the shame. But Jesus knew they were set up for something that would change everything. You never see any of those 11 denying Christ or even faltering after they were baptized in fire. Never again. <clears throat> I want you to look at a couple verses with me, and then we're going to pray. I'd like for you to go to 1 John chapter 3. <clears throat> and I want to just read this story. I want to play this story out for you <clears throat> tonight before we actually pray and start praying for people. <clears throat> Excuse me, verse, sorry, 1 John 3, verse 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. I want you to see this moment. I think one of the greatest mysteries is that God became a man 
but didn't become a full-grown man. Jesus, excuse me, the Father sent a baby to destroy a giant. And he sent Jesus, who was born of a woman, and somehow lived with an awareness he had an assignment, but he couldn't do it until he was 30 years old and he was released. And the assignment was, we just read it, destroy the works of the devil. Imagine living for 30 years, being aware that you had an assignment, and everywhere you turn, you see the assignment, but you can't do it yet, because you have to wait. And he waited until he had permission from the Father to carry out his commission. I've said it before, just even recently, but I want to say it again tonight, just in context of what I believe the Lord wants to do in this house tonight. Authority comes in the commission. And Jesus Christ was sent to earth, commissioned by the Father. Based upon that, he came with the authority of the Father to destroy the works of the devil. So every time Jesus confronted a demon, confronted sickness, confronted a storm, confronted whatever it was that was out of order, the chaotic thinking of the religious mind, the political thinking of humanist-centered people. Every time he confronted every one of these realms, he came with the entire backing of heaven because he had been assigned by the Father. He came with authority. But it's equally important for us to realize that Jesus didn't do anything until he had his own encounter with the Spirit of God. He could have done everything as God, but remember, he chose to live with the same restrictions of any human being that had no sin and was empowered by the Holy Spirit. I want you to look at Luke chapter 3. Luke chapter 3 gives us the next portion of the story. Luke 3, verse 21 when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. While he prayed, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, You are my beloved Son, and you I am well pleased. Verse 1 of chapter 4. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Something took place here that even Jesus needed before he would be released in ministry. And it's vital that you and I get it. He came with authority and could have accomplished some of the mission based on authority. But some of the mission he was given could not have been accomplished without the other half of his requirement. And that was to be clothed with power. And so he, like a man, went to John the Baptist and has to be baptized. It's an amazing story. I love, I love trying to picture and imagine how it worked. You know, I don't know. I can only imagine like you. But the Father had actually told John the Baptist that he was to go and baptize, and that through baptizing people, that's how he would discover the Messiah. So I don't know how that looks to you, but to me it looks like, nope, you're not him. <laughs> nope, you're not him. No, nope, you're not him. And so John is prophesying what's about to happen at some point. And he has no clue when. And he looks up on the banks of the river. And without baptizing anybody, he recognized him. And he said, behold, or stop, look. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He had already prophesied, announced, declared out of his own Revelation that he wasn't even worthy to stoop and untie his shoes. And now he sees him, and the most frightening thing possible happens. This one, he's not worthy to untie his shoes, starts walking towards him. And he comes towards Jesus, towards John. And Jesus says, baptize me. And John says, I need to be baptized by you. Why? John lived in a season where Jesus' baptism would be unavailable. The baptism in the Holy Spirit in fire. The greatest of all Old Testament prophets looked at the Messiah and said, 
You want me to baptize you, and it's me who needs your baptism. And Jesus said, John, just permit it at this time. Sometimes when we're willing to do what we're not qualified to do, qualifies us. And John baptized Jesus. And when he did, because Jesus became as a man who had no sin, and yet was modeling a baptism of repentance, and he had nothing to repent for, he literally stood in the shoes of a person in great need and was baptized. And when he did that, the Spirit of God came upon him in the form of a dove. And it says, he was clothed with power. It was at that point where the Spirit of God came upon him and he had both authority and power. We know throughout Jesus' ministry that the disciples were able to function in a measure of his authority and power. We know that he brought them together in Luke 9, and he gave them power and authority over demons and to heal disease. He gave them a commission, and they did so. But what, he had, what they had experienced was secondhand. If I, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, it, was, it was something that Jesus was carrying, but it was not enough to keep them from denying it. It wasn't enough to keep them a Judas from betraying him. And so Jesus dies. The Bible says he descends into the lower parts of the earth and he leads captive a host of captives where all the believers who had died in the Old Testament before the blood of Jesus was shed you see, a believer in the Old Testament couldn't go to heaven because the blood of bulls and goats, sheep, never dealt with sin. It only postponed the penalty. And when Jesus died, it said he descended into the lower parts of the earth and he proclaimed among the captives, the price has been paid. And he took captive a host of captives, those who were bound by the law of sin, he came in and announced to them, it is settled. And he took this company of people on his way to the Father to present the prize. And on his way to the Father, he sees a woman in the Gospel of John weeping at the tomb. And he stops the procession. And he goes to Mary at the tomb. And she's weeping. She thinks he's the gardener. She says, do you know where they, where they took him? Because she saw that Jesus was not there. Do you know where they've taken him? And Jesus mentions her name. And she is stunned. Because while she didn't recognize his appearance, she did recognize life comes from his voice. Something came alive inside. And she reached and she clung to him. And Jesus said, don't hang on to me. I haven't gone to the Father yet. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, first touched Jesus as he was born from her womb, she was the virgin representing purity, cleanness. But the first one to touch Jesus when he was born from the dead, the firstborn from the dead, It was the harlot as she embraced him because she was introducing an hour and a season of grace where everyone is welcome. 
Jesus takes the company of people. Interestingly, in Matthew's Gospel, in the 27th chapter, it says that when Jesus died and rose again, the graves of the saints had opened, and many of them were seen walking around town. That's weird. <laughs> if you can imagine, Jesus stops, and he turns to the company of people that he has just brought from captivity in death, bound by sin, because only his blood could free them. And he came and made the announcement, they were now free. And he's ascending to the Father, and he stops to talk to this woman. And he stops, and he turns to the group, says, I'll be right back. And you can just see David and Solomon and the guys saying, let's go catch a few sights as long as we got some time. See how the city's doing. So Jesus talking with her, and people in the city are actually seeing some of the old saints walking around town. Jesus is through with the woman, and he ascends. And he takes captive a host of captives and presents them as the prize to the Father. So Jesus died and was raised. He ascended, and then he was glorified. And he brought with him a host of people that he had just purchased with his blood. This that took place in John 20 would change everything forever. Because now it's possible for someone to be clothed with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Not as a temporary encounter, but as an ongoing fire, a river, a river, a river that flows within you. We'll look at at least one more passage before we actually pray. So why don't you turn quickly to John 7, and I want to just show you a reference about this wonderful river. John chapter 7. You guys doing all right? John 7. I feel like the Lord's going to release something tonight. That's why I'm, I, I'm very single in my focus here. John chapter 7, verse 37. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. I love this picture. I know we've looked at it numerous times through the years. But it doesn't ever get old to me. for me. I, I read it often. He says, come to me and drink. Picture this. Come. Have a drink. And you take a drink. And suddenly, what was a drink becomes a river. What you received now flows out of you with unlimited heavenly resource. The drink becomes a river. Bam! <laughs> Verse 39. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. It's important to understand these two verses. The Holy Spirit is in us as a river once he is received. What I received in a drink, that which was refreshing, becomes a resource in me to shape the geography around me. God's mathematics are way different than ours. A drink becomes a river. That's normal for him. And then he goes on to say that he's talking about the Holy Spirit when he's talking about the river. He's using prophetic language, water. I, years ago, I did a study where I looked up every reference I could find in the Bible on water. Rivers, springs, rain, pools, everywhere I could find it. I noticed something extraordinary. 
that all through the prophets especially, the Psalms included, the prophets and the Psalms, whenever they were addressing a national crisis, a catastrophe, a plague, a sin issue, it didn't matter what it was, when a nation was in trouble, God would prophesy water. He would deal with things. He would say, turn from your sins, these sorts of things. But he would, there would be the announcement of pools in the desert, rivers on the mountains. And I will come to you like rain. And there are these phrases that are used intermittently throughout the prophets and the Psalms and even Proverbs about him coming to you like rain. Because there is a cure-all. And that cure-all is the presence of the Spirit of God upon the people of God. Whenever there's the announcement of rain, whenever there's the announcement of pools, of rivers, every time I can find, it's a prophecy about the Holy Spirit coming in great power. It's a prophetic decree about his coming. It wasn't just dealing with their need of drinking water. It was making a decree that regardless of what kind of mess you're in, people of God, my presence upon you is the answer. It changes everything. But I want you to see this. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. As a young man, I grew up wondering why in the world Jesus didn't release the Holy Spirit on the twelve disciples, because they obviously had great need of him. And I never caught this verse. He explains why here. He says he couldn't release the Holy Spirit then because he wasn't glorified. Well, can't they be in the same place at the same time? Could, could the Holy Spirit not be released while Jesus was here? No, that wasn't the point because the Spirit of God was upon Jesus, so they could be. So why couldn't he release the Spirit of God on the disciples while he was here? It says there the reason because he had not been glorified. So let's look at the reason. What's the Holy Spirit's work to us, in us, to us, for us? We know that he comforts. We know that he guides. We know that he teaches. He directs. We know that he empowers. We know that he does all these things. We can find different passages that talk about each of these expressions of the Spirit of God upon a believer. If I were to take that list, add it all up, and come to one conclusion, he has come for this one reason, it would be this. The Holy Spirit's assignment is to make you like Jesus. So then why could the Holy Spirit not be given until Jesus was glorified? Because if he was given before Jesus was glorified, the Holy Spirit would be shaping you into the image of the Christ headed to the cross, not the Christ resurrected, ascended, and glorified at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit has an assignment. It's to make us like the glorified one. People frequently make the statement, I just had someone comment to me recently, this last week, Bill, you don't think we can actually be free from sin. You're not saying that we can be free from sin now, can you? And I gave a Georgian Banoff quote back to them. Because he said it better than anybody I've ever heard. Georgian said, if we're not free from sin until we die, then Jesus isn't our Savior. Death is.
Wow. Wow. If Jesus isn't, excuse me, if we aren't free from sin until we die, then Jesus isn't our Savior. Death is. What's the problem? There's many people trying to accomplish a complete assignment with half the provision. They know the authority, but they've not encountered the power, the spirit of the living God, the baptism of fire that changes everything. It's the two. Jesus has made this available for every believer. He's not just made it available. It was never meant to be reduced to a doctrine that we could debate. It was never meant to be reduced to an idea that we could analyze and that we could critique. It was supposed to be something that makes you speechless once he's touched you. And you don't know near as much after as you did before. And the eloquence that you thought you had before the encounter suddenly vanishes as you find yourself babbling. But your babbling has more power than all your profound statements because you've been possessed by fire, by the fire of the living God. He told the disciples after he showed up in Matthew 28, go ahead and turn there, even though you know the passage. Still like for, I like to see it in my own Bible, even though I can quote it. <clears throat> Matthew 28, he says to them, in verse 18, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus, in that <clears throat> commission, released to them the authority they would need to accomplish the assignment. But he also mentioned in Luke 24, and I'll just read it to you, or quote it to you. Don't leave Jerusalem until you've been clothed with power. What's happened here? Jesus is raised from the dead. The woman, Mary, grabbed him. He says, don't, don't hang on to me. I've got to go to the Father. He presents the resurrected ones to the Father. He comes back and he appears over a period of 40 days on numerous occasions to different ones, speaking of the things concerning the kingdom telling them to stay in Jerusalem, they're about to be clothed with power. They didn't know what would happen. They would just know it after it happened. In this great moment, Jesus gives them the authority that he came to earth with. In John 20, he said, As the Father has sent me, I send you. So in other words, my assignment to destroy the works of the devil is now your assignment to destroy the works of the devil. If I commanded you, I want to make sure that you command those who come to me through you. Let's keep the same standard throughout the generations. And then he says, but don't leave Jerusalem until you've had your own baptism of fire. I believe the Lord wants to release a fresh baptism of fire. I want you to stand. Let it rain indoors, Lord. 
let it rain once again. Let a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit come. Touch every hungry heart and every non-hungry heart. You know this is true. You get hungry by eating. So I'm going to ask him to force feed. (laughs) Holy Spirit, come, I ask. Come. Increase your touch upon people, God. Increase. Increase it. Increase it equally for those on TV, those on podcast. Increase. Increase. The fiery presence of God. Increase. I want you to express your hunger to Him. Put it on your lips. I can pray for you, but right now you need to pray for you. Increase this, Lord. Increase our capacity to hunger for more. Increase this, Lord God. Increase. Yes, God. Yes, God. Baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. Pour out your 
spirit answer by fire show forth your mercy your heart is my desire your heart is my desire pour out your spirit pour out your spirit answer by fire show forth your mercy your heart is my desire your heart is my desire pour out pour out your spirit answer by fire show forth your mercy your heart is my desire your heart is my desire one last time pour out your spirit answer by fire show forth your mercy your heart is my desire. Your heart is my desire. Now, Lord, I pray for just an increase of an outpouring of your presence, your fire upon every person in this room. I pray right now. Set us up, Lord God, for a season, a season of encounters with you that change everything. God, off the charts, beyond what we can, beyond what we could be tempted to control, beyond what we could be tempted to direct and to try to explain and overanalyze, we say, come, Holy Spirit, come even now. Come with a fresh baptism of fire. Come with a fresh baptism of fire. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Increase this Lord. Increase this Lord. Increase this Lord. Increase this Lord. Increase. 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 I want you just to continue to pray for those who actually feel fiery presence on you right now. Just a, that fiery presence of the Lord, or you can't help but weeping. You can't keep yourself from weeping. I, I want those of you that have that kind of unusual manifestation, your hands are trembling. It's something that you can't control. I want those to come to the front right now. We're going to start praying with those that God is touching in that unique way. Just come quickly right now if that's you that fire of his presence is already touching you there's that trembling that shaking that weeping that's taking place even right now I want you just to come and stand along the front stand and come along the front this isn't haves and have not this is just process that the Lord takes us through as a people and the Lord is about to release a mighty wave of presence a mighty wave of encounter but I want us to start with these that the Spirit of God is just touching uniquely even right now. Spirit of God, that you would come with power upon these. Come with power upon these. Even now we pray in Jesus' name. Come with power upon these. Even now in Jesus' name. Increase, increase, Lord, that fiery presence. Even now. A fresh baptism of fire. Even now. A fresh baptism of fire. Even now. A fresh baptism of fire. Even now, a fresh baptism of fire, a fresh baptism of fire, a fresh baptism of fire, 
even now, Lord God, a fresh baptism of fire. A fresh baptism of fire. Come, oh God. Paul, some of the other staff, the other team, help me out here. A fresh baptism of fire. Come, Lord. A fresh baptism. A fresh baptism of fire. A fresh baptism of fire. Come, Lord. A fresh baptism of fire. A fresh baptism of fire. Come, Lord God. Increase this even now. Come, Lord. Increase this even now. A fresh baptism of fire. Come, Lord. Increase this even now. Increase this even now. A fresh baptism of fire. A fresh mighty baptism. A fresh mighty baptism. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. A fresh and mighty baptism of fire. God, we pray for this increase. 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 Come. And pray for this increase. Come, Lord. A fresh baptism of fire. A fresh baptism of fire. Come, Lord. Increase. Increase. Throughout the entire audience, throughout the entire congregation, let waves of fire come, Lord. Waves of fire come, Lord. Waves of fire come. Waves of fire. Waves of presence come, Lord. Increase. Increase this, Lord God. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. We say more. We say more. We say more. We say more. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. We say more. Baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Increase this. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. We say more. We say more. We say more. We say more. Increase. Increase. Increase this, Lord. This baptism of fire. Sounds strange, but I want you to just put your hand on your own head. Just prophesy over your own self. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Be filled to overflowing. Be filled to overflowing. Be filled to overflowing. The presence, the power of the Spirit of God resting upon the people of God was His goal from day one. A people possessed by His presence. A people living in perfect harmony with His heart. Living in perfect harmony with His heart. His heart, His mind. Increase, 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 increase. Baptism of fire. 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 Fresh baptism of fire. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Fresh baptism of fire. Increase this, Lord. Increase. Increase. As best you know how, express your hunger to the Lord. Some of you will be touched right now. Some of you will be in the middle of the night. Some of you will be in the middle of the week. But he is setting people up right now for divine encounters. He said, Lord God, let this spread like wildfire throughout our city, throughout our nation, healing to a nation, Lord. Healing to a nation. Baptism of fire. A baptism of fire. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord God. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord God. Increase this, Lord.
Increase. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. <clears throat> Increase this, Lord. Yet again. Yet again. Increase, Lord. God. Yes, Lord. Go deeper still. Go deeper still. Go deeper still, Lord God. Deeper still, Lord. Increase. Increase again. Go deeper. Go deeper, Lord. Go deeper, Lord God. Go deeper still. Go deeper still. Deeper, Lord. Increase this, Father. Increase. Increase this, Lord God. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. We say more. We say more. We say more. Increase this, Lord. We say more. Increase. Increase, Father. Increase. Never the same again. Never the same again. Never the same again. Just one touch and never the same again. We say, Lord, just come. Come burn deeply here, Lord God. Come burn deeply here, Lord God. Touch deeply. Baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. Come, Lord. Increase this here, God. Come. Increase this here, Lord. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. More. We say more. We say more. We say more. Come, Lord God. Increase this, Lord. Increase this. Baptism of fire. Come. We say more, 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 we say more. Increase this, Lord God, increase this. Touch deep here, God. Touch deep here, Lord. Touch deep here, Lord. Lord. We say more, we say more, we say more. We say more, we say more, we say more. Increase. Increase this Lord. Touch deep. Fresh, fresh baptism of fire. If you sense the Lord just touching you in, in any way and you feel freedom to do it, just put a hand on somebody next to you and just ask the Lord to double it. Just to double, to increase and to double, to touch them deeper than you've ever known. Touch them deeper than you've ever known. We pray for that. 
that fire of your presence, Lord God. Increase, increase, increase this year, Lord. Increase, increase, increase this, my God. Yes, Lord. I say more. Fresh baptism of fire. A fresh baptism of fire. Increase this, Lord God. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Touch him deep, God. Touch deeply here, Lord. We say more, we say more, we say more. Come, Lord. We say more, we say more, we say more. Come. We say more. Increase this, Father. Touch deeply here, God. Come with power. Touch, God. Touch deeply. Go deeper still, deeper still, deeper still. A fresh, fresh baptism of fire. A fresh, fresh baptism of fire. God set people up for a series of encounters. Series of encounters that start tonight. A new season, a season of encounters. Season of encounters that start tonight, Lord. Go deeper still, God. Go deeper, go deeper still, Lord. Deeper still. Come, God. Come, Lord. Come up upon this vent. Come, Lord. We say more, we say more, we say more. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. We say more, we say more, we say more. Come, God. Come, Lord. Come, Lord. Increase this, God. Increase. Increase this, Lord. Increase. We say more, we say more, we say more. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. More. Increase this, Lord. Increase this, Lord. More. Baptism of fire. Increase this, God. More. More. I'd like if more of our staff, if the Lord's touching you deeply, then don't, don't change what you're doing. But if staff or interns are able to help us, I want us to go through the whole sanctuary to start praying for people. I'm going to assume if they're still in the building, they want prayer. So we're, just, we're going to do this until the Lord says stop. Just baptism of fire. Baptism of fire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. A baptism of fire. Increase that here, God. Increase that here. We say more, we say more, we say more. Increase that here, Lord God. We say more. Increase, Lord. Increase, increase, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. We say more, we say more. More, more, more. More, more, more. Increase this, God. More. More, more, more. Increase, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, many people want God to come in controllable doses. And he wants to come beyond reason. He said he would do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. There's a deep, deep encounter that the Spirit of God has. Study the revivalists throughout history. They all had some profound encounter with God. We see it in Acts chapter 2, we see it again in Acts chapter 4, and it's some of the same people. So that tells me we need more than one encounter. We need for God to continuously touch us. So we just pray for more, God. We pray for more. We pray for increase. We pray for increase, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come, God. Come, Lord God. Come, Lord. Say more, we say more, we say more. If you have the courage, invite God to touch you any way He wants. Any way you want. Any way you want, God. Any way you want, God. More, more, more.
increase, increase, increase again, Lord. Just another wave of your presence, God, throughout the whole building. Just another wave of your presence, God. On TV, on podcast, everywhere this goes, Lord. Everywhere we go. <clears throat> increase this, Lord. Increase. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yep, this is the big deal. It's saying, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yeah, don't stop. Don't stop yet. Don't stop yet. Yes, Lord God. Increase, increase, Lord. More, more, more. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say more, we say more. Increase this one. Increase this one. We say more, we say more. Increase. <laughs> Increase it again. 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 it again
Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> increase this again, Lord. Increase, increase it again, Lord. We say more, we say more. Yes, God. sing this again for the sake of the world I believe I believe that the Lord is releasing a series of encounters to us as a corporate family but also as individuals
Now let's sing it again. I want you to pray for yourself. Make this your prayer. Every eye to see. For the sake of the world, we're like a fire in me. For the sake of the world. For the sake of the world, we're like a fire in me. Light a flame in my soul for every eye to see. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Sing it again. Like a fire in me. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Light a flame in my soul. For every eye to see, for the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Sing it again. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Light a flame in my soul for every eye. One last time. One last time. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Light a flame in my soul for every eye to see. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Now put that in your own words as you pray for yourself. Put it in your words. Invite him to come and do as he pleases. Not just tonight, but from this point on. I don't ever want to represent a move of God as a controlled burn. I don't ever want to be guilty of representing a move of God as something that's tidy. I don't believe in making messes just to be weird. But I tell you what, there are times where there's nights like this that go on for hours. There's such deep encounter with the Lord that when I get back to the hotel room, I can't sleep. Not because I'm my mind's wandering or excited about the evening, but because there's a presence on me that's a fire, and I can't, I, I can't, I can't stop. It just 
it just burns. I, I won't ask him to lift that presence. I won't ask him to do that. But I, sometimes I'm there laying in the middle of the night and just, just can't sleep because the fire of his presence is just so strong. You know, people love the idea that, you know, I've been declaring for a year or so now how Israel, how the church camps around a sermon and Israel camped around the presence. Well, this right here is the connecting to the presence in a way that you can't forget. There's a reference point in your own encounter. It's not a point of theology. It's not a point of, is well, I believe he's here. Is that you've been, been touched by the power of his presence. And you know that presence and you'll never forget it again. Never, you, you never lose that sense for the presence again. And I pray for that for you. I pray that for us. That the Lord would do something continuously deep and profound. We've been emphasizing a lot in the last couple of years about... See, this thing started with power. It started in fire. And we felt the word of the Lord to us was to teach people how to live in and among the city without acting weird, but just being a people of presence. And how to be in the city and to love people and to serve them at their point of need and not feel the compulsion to, to lay hands and to shout and yell over people. And so we... We've taken a subtle route in recent months, in recent years, and I believe it's been the Lord, but it's never to be at the expense of a baptism of fire. I'm not interested in merely being recognized as a nice person. It's time to move some mountains. Time to move some mountains. It's time. It's time. It's time. I believe it's it's wisdom to learn how to to hold your drink when you get in public to be able to be with people and not not get weird. But I also think it's wisdom when you're in the house. And you're with family. Hopefully they understand. If they don't, they'll adjust. Put a hand on the person next to you and just pray, God, give them more. Just give them more. Give them more. Give them more. Increase this again, Lord. Increase this again, Lord. Increase this again, Lord. Increase this again, Lord. declare we owe people an encounter with God. You have to have one to give it. And I would never want to imply you don't, but I'm telling you there's more. There's more. He goes deeper. He goes deeper still. The disciples at one point said, we cannot help but speak. We can't contain what is in us. It's no longer a controlled conversation. It's no longer a controlled discussion. There is this compulsion. There is this volcanic presence within us who wants out. So we pray for more, God. We do. We pray for more. We pray for the dramatic increase that changes everything, Lord. Thank you, most high God. More, 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 more. 